Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom family, Most High in Christ Blessed. My name is Captain Mattathias. I'm Soldier Losias. All right, so we have another 15 minutes with the captains today. All right, so today's topic is miscarriages, okay? Um, this is definitely something that I can't say all, uh, but a lot of brothers and sisters have experienced this during their time in the truth, and even maybe before, okay? So, um, Lord's will, uh, today's class can help those who have... Um, gone through this or are going through this, hopefully this can give you some comfort, okay? Uh, let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 6. I'm going to start right here. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 6. The book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 6. Come on. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. All right, so that's the commandment. That's the commandment, all right? So it says, take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. Read. The book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 6. Come on. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters. All right. So that's the that's the design and that's the plan of the Most High God. All right. First and foremost. So I did want to start right there. All right. So let's go to the law. All right. Give me the book of Exodus uh, chapter 21 verse 22. All right. The law pertaining to. Uh, miscar a miscarriage under certain circumstances. Okay, read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 21 and verse 22. Come on. If men strive and hurt a woman with child. All right, so striving is what? Um, arguing or what? Going back and forth in a uh, fight, being violent one with another. Read it again. Verse 22. Come on. If men strive and hurt a woman with child mm -hmm. so that her fruit depart from her. Her fruit is going into the seed, going into that child, whether it be a, a man child or, or a girl. Read on. And yet no mischief follow. Meaning what? It was by accident. So it stopped. It ceased. Read. He shall be surely punished. Come on. According as the woman's husband will lay upon him. Mm -hmm. And he shall pay as the judges determined. So the reason why we wanted to go there is to show you that even though it may be hard to wrap your mind around the fact of why miscarriages happen, there's a law on it showing you what? That the Most High God already knew that this would be something that we'd have to deal with, okay? So first and foremost, understand that the Most High God, he's always in control, okay? Uh, from there, let's go to the book of Job, the third chapter. I want to start at uh, verse 11, okay? Um, read that when you get it. The book of Job, chapter 3 and verse 11. Come on. Why died I not from the womb? All right, so Job says, how come he didn't die from the womb? Meaning what? How come uh, he wasn't a stillborn? That's what you, you said, That's what you would actually call it when the baby comes out already uh, dead and gone. Read. Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Come on. Why did the knees prevent me? Mm -hmm. Or why the breast that I should suck? Come on. For now should I have lain still and been quiet, mm -hmm. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. Because he was going through so much. He says, why, why are all of these things um, happening to me? Earlier up in the chapter, he says, cursed be the day that he was born. Uh, read on. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves. Come on. Or with princes that had gold who filled their houses with silver, mm -hmm. or as in hidden untimely birth, I had not been. It says, or as in hidden untimely birth, he had not been. Read. As infants which never saw light. As infants which never saw light. So no, another scripture, another scripture just to back up to show you that, hey, this is a part of life. Definitely uh, one of the most difficult parts of life, but just to give you that comfort that, uh, give me 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 13 to give you the comfort here. Watch this. <clears throat> that people have been through it before, even in biblical times. All right. Uh, read that. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Come on. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That's common to man. Okay. We read two precepts to, sh to prove that, that 
Unfortunately, it's difficult, but it is common to man. Read on. But God is faithful. But God is faithful. Come on. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. So brothers and sisters alike, if you have gone through uh, a situation like this, understand the most I got put, th put you through this because he knows that you can take it. Okay. Right. All right. From there, let's go to the book of um, uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We're going to jump, actually just start at verse 8. Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 11, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all. And so it says if you uh, live many years and rejoice every day, read. Yet let him remember the days of darkness. So guess what? We're going to have some good days mm -hmm. and we're going to have some bad days. Okay, read it again from the top. Verse 8, mm -hmm. but if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness. Come on. For they shall be many. Uh-huh. All that cometh is vanity. All that cometh is vanity, meaning what? It's all trials. It's all trials because one day it's not going to be like this anymore. Okay, that's what, that's what uh, King Solomon was saying. All of his vanity because eventually, hey. We're not going to be on this, this earth as we know it in these bodies anymore, okay? Uh, from there, give me the book of Psalms chapter 68, verse 19. I want 19 and 20, okay? Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 68 and verse 19. Uh-huh. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits. You see that? So we give the Most High God glory when we are blessed. So it says, blessed be the Lord who, uh, read it again, I don't want to mess it up. Blessed. Be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Who daily loadeth us with benefits. It's, he gives us mercy. He gives us blessing, food, raiment, clothing every day. Read. Even the God of our salvation. Even the God of our salvation. Watch verse 20. Salah. He that is our God is the God of salvation. Come on. And unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. You see that? But unto God belong the issues from death as well. So he, he blesses us. Mm -hmm. And guess what? And also, the issues of death also belong to God. So you got to take the good with the bad. But ultimately, understand that it comes from the Most High God. Okay? All right. From there, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 4. So during this, this time, which is a definitely difficult time, all right, the Most High, he speaks about that, how to handle the situation. Okay? Give me Ecclesiastes 3 and 4. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. A time to weep and a time to Start laugh. at verse 1, I'm sorry. Verse 1. Come on. To everything there is a season mm -hmm. and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Read on. A time to be born. There's a time to be born. Come on. And a time to die. Uh-huh. And a time to plant. And a time to pluck up that uh, which is planted. All right. So it says there's a time to be born and there's a time to die as well. Read on. Verse 3. Come on. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, mm -hmm. a time to weep and a time to laugh, Read. a time to mourn and a time to dance. And a time to dance. So, you know, having that expectation of a child coming, that's, that's exciting news. That's, that's dancing. Uh, you're laughing. You're having a good time. Uh, just thinking about the possibilities. But when the Most High God... Uh, decides to what bless us or or remove us we we still have to acknowledge that and understand that it's it's okay because he said it's uh just like it's a time to laugh or dance it's also a time to mourn give me that in the book of Sirach chapter 38 and uh, 17 start at verse 16 <clears throat> the book of Sirach chapter 38 and verse 16 come on my son let tears fall down over the dead mm -hmm. and begin to lament as if thou hadst suffered great harm thyself. Come on. And then cover his body according to the custom. According to the custom, our custom is a, a proper burial. Come on. And neglect not his bur burial. Uh huh. Weep bitterly and make great mourn and use lamentation as he is worthy. As he is worthy. Okay. As he is worthy. Uh, that being your, whether it be your son or whether it be your daughter, that's definitely worthy, okay? Uh, read on. And that a day or two 
lest thou be evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. And then comfort thyself for thy heaviness. And then comfort thyself, meaning what? Do not let this be the ruin of you. Meaning, uh, like we read in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, there's no temptation that um, is not common to man. Okay? Uh, jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. Come on. When the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest mm -hmm. and be comforted for him when his spirit is departed from him. Verse 24. No, just read 23 again. Verse 23. Come on. When the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest. Right. So when it's that time after the burial, after the funeral, okay, now it's time to let uh, his or her remembrance rest. All right. So you can begin to what? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 3 says, a time to kill and a time to heal. Okay. That's your time to heal. All right. So let's drop that. Let's go to the book of um, Sirach chapter 6 verse 7. Going into this time, this is why marriage is so honorable. Marriage is very, very honorable because if you find yourself with the wrong spouse, they're not going to be there to support you according to the scriptures. Okay. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. Come on. If thou wouldest get a friend, mm -hmm. prove him first. Read. And be not hasty to credit him. Don't be hasty to credit. Meaning what? You have to prove them according to the scriptures. Okay? So you can end up with a Sirach 37 and 12 man. Okay? I want you to uh, read that for me. Sirach chapter 37, verse 12. Watch this. We read this a lot, all right, uh, out at camp. But it's it's... It's essential going into situations and times like this. Read, we read your God. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 12. Come on. But be continually with a godly man. So the scripture says, be continually with a godly man. Why? Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Uh-huh. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Watch this. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Meaning what? In a situation like this, you don't want to be alone. Okay? You don't want to be by yourself. You want someone who is going to be there with you, who is going to support you, and give you a scriptural guidance to keep you strong, to keep you uh, together. Okay? Right. All right, from there, let's go to the book of uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Okay? All right, Ephesians chapter 5. I want you to start at verse 25. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Come on. Husbands, love your wives. Do what? Love your wives. Uh-huh. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Jump down to uh, 28. Verse 28. Uh-huh. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. As their own bodies. Read on. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Mm -hmm. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it. You see that thing right there? So he's going to think, you know, that's me. It's not just her dealing with that. No, no, no. That's me dealing with that. We are one flesh. Okay? From there, let's go to the book of... Uh, Ecclesiastes again. I want you to start at verse 5 this time. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 5. Come on. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, mm -hmm. nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. So the scripture is saying we don't understand the way of the spirit. We don't even understand how can a, uh, a seed start growing into an actual person in the womb. We don't understand that. Right. Read. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. That's why it's best in these situations not to question, why did this happen? You don't, un you don't understand why. Understand that God did it, and we have to apply the scriptures. We need to mourn when it's time to mourn, and we need to begin to heal when it's time to heal. Okay? Give me the book of John, the ninth chapter. I want you to start at verse 1 and read down. John chapter 9, verse 1. The book of John, chapter 9 and verse 1. Come on. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Watch this. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? Come on. That he was born blind. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned. So he answered the question because our forefathers, we had the understanding of that that would be judgment. Just like when it comes to miscarriages, it may be a judgment, but that's not up to us to decide. Watch how Christ answers him. Read verse 3. 
Verse 3. Uh -huh. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, uh -huh. nor his parents, Read. but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So a lot of times we have to realize that God is in control. And a lot of, that's hard for a black man and Hispanic man to do. But the Most High God allows things like that to happen just to show, hey, you, I have to allow this baby to be born. I have to uh, make this or that happen. We always have to make sure to give God his glory in the good and in the bad, okay? Give me the book of Isaiah 57 and 1. And I uh, got about two more precepts, then we'll be done. Isaiah 57 and verse 1. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 57 and verse 1. Come on. The righteous perish, and no man layeth it to heart, mm -hmm. and merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. There you go. Because the most high God, hey, he may say, you know what? I don't want that spirit to come back. Okay. They did what they needed to do. They finished their course. Now they're going to wait. They're going to wait for my return. Okay. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter six and verse three. Mm -hmm. If a man beget an hundred children. Watch this. And live many years. Uh -huh. So that the days of his years be many. And his soul be not filled with good. So it says a man has a, 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 a bountiful uh, amount of children, okay? So does that mean that he's blessed of God? Not necessarily. Read it again from the top. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. If a man beget an hundred children and live many years, so that the days of his years be many, uh -huh. and his soul be not filled with good. Come on. And also that he have no burial. Uh -huh. I say that an untimely birth is better than he. You see what the Bible says? It says an untimely birth is better than he, even though he had all of those children. That's why, give me Sirach 9 and 11. All right, this is why the Bible says that. So understand, hey, you may you may think it's bad, but no, 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 no. The Most High God, he doesn't make mistakes. He knows what he's doing. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 11. Come on. And be not the glory of a sinner. Mm -hmm. For thou knowest not what shall be his end. Exactly. Exactly. But the righteous, we're going to go, we are going to go through our trials, but we have, to, we can't uh, lose track and we can not lose sight on what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Last scripture. Give me Psalm chapter 139. And I want you to start at verse um, six. No, no, no. Start at verse 13. The book of Psalms chapter 139 and verse 13. Mm-hmm. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. In my mother's womb. Showing you what? That the Most High God, hey, you may have not got to see or be or experience the child, but understand, God was with that child in the womb. Okay? Read on. Verse 14. Uh-huh. I will praise thee, for I am fearful and wonderfully made. Uh-huh. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Read. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Come on. Thine eyes did see my substance, uh -huh. yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, mm -hmm. which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. So we're going to stop right there just to show you. Hey, um, the Most High God, He's with each and every one of us, okay? Even those uh, who have passed before birth, okay? So Lord's will, these words will comfort you in your situation, all right? All right. So once again, I'm Captain Mattathias. I'm Soldier Losias. All right, this has been 15 Minutes with the Captains, and we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.